Talk about, uh, a moment about your time with the, with the Georgia NAACP as field director for Georgia. Now, you are entering into what traditionally has been a hierarchical, traditional, and relatively speaking, conservative organization. Um, how did you find it? I liked it. Mm. I liked the mission. I liked the tradition and the history. Uh, I loved Ruby Hurley. I had great admiration for, for Roy Wilkins. And this was a job about organizing, basically. And the time was ripe. It was 1961. There was a lot of fervor. What was exciting about it is that you could go to almost any town in Georgia, go to the local filling station, and asked the black guy in the filling station, who, who is the NAACP man here? Mm -hmm. And he always could tell you who it was. Now, the, the organization may not have had a meeting for two or three years, mm -hmm. completely defunct, but there was a person who was considered the NAACP man because at one point he really was and it was active and for what, whatever reason, it was it was dysfunctional and so I found that and I would find that person and I, and I would you know say we got to get this started up again I should never forget the Brunswick Georgia NAACP uh, was run by preacher and Mrs. Lyde who may still be alive I think and it had gotten down to about 10 people, and they just met socially, mm -hmm. had cake and ice cream, and sold a few memberships. And I got there as a news. I said, we got to revive this. we got to do better. And got Julius Caesar Hope, mm -hmm. who now is in Detroit, right. interested. He was in the past of Zion Baptist Church in, in Brunswick. And we just brought that back. We brought it back, and we had mass meetings. We got a program. Uh, the same thing was true in Albany, Georgia. In the midst of all of that, it was defunct. SNCC was big. SCLC had come in. But we found a core group of all the people who found a niche for the NAACP and that program. So the organizing, the, the, um, the work of getting people to joined the NAACP, it had a process that not many people know about. In some of those small towns in 1961, to have your NAACP membership card come to the mail could mean that you would lose your job or otherwise be discomforted. So with W.W. W. Law, who was then the president of the state conference, after a membership campaign, we would have a mass meeting. And we would pass out membership cards like a college president passes out diplomas. Mm -hmm. And it was a big thing. Brother <laughs> Julian Bond, come and get your NAACP membership card. And it was, it was a marvelous experience. Uh, and many of them in those days never carried the NAACP card around in their pocket. They would leave it at home in the family Bible pretty good place for the NAACP membership card, it seems to me. And so that was, that was, um, that was the beginning of my testing as a leader. You had to have a state conference. You had to write a report. You had to go do investigations. You, you had to secure counsel uh, uh, for local people who, who, who needed lawyers. You had to organize mass meetings. And the one thing that you learned is that you never select the biggest church in town. You select a medium-sized church and then fill it up. It's better to have a medium-sized church full so that the press can say there was an overflowing crowd than to have the biggest church in the crowds half empty. And so things like that you learn. You learned about leaflets and pamphlets and, and how to organize the community around an issue around the mass meeting of which Roger World Wilkins was going to speak. And you learned how to navigate and negotiate within the NAACP, without the NAACP. I remember once going to, being sent to Savannah 
to solve a dispute between Wesley W. Law, the president of the branch, and Jose Williams, the head of the Crusader, Crusader Women Voters. Well, I learned a lesson about that. And that is that you never go into a local community as an outsider to bring the two groups together. I remember getting there and putting Jose on one side, W.W. W. Law on the other. I sat in the middle. Before the meeting was over, Jose Williams and W.W. Law were on the same side against me. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was a fabulous lesson in, in local uh, dispute resolution.